What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this one, I'm playing a cash game session of deuces. Before we start, just a quick note that I in no way consider myself a pro and I'm very much aware that I sometimes make some questionable plays. This vlog is a way for me to review and critique my plays and this episode definitely has a couple of hands I'm not too happy with. Anyway, we've got a bunch of hands to cover in this one, so sit back, relax, and let's get into it. What better way to start a session than with pocket aces? That's what I pick up in Under the Gun 1 and Action Folds to me. I want to build up this pot so I make it 20 to go and that's about as big as this pot will get as everybody folds. We got some double barrel bomb pot action in this one. There's two boards and the pot is split between the best high hand and the best low hand overall. Six of us see a flop of 9, 9, ace, two clubs on top and queen, six, three, two diamonds on bottom. I'm in the small blind with king, queen, nine, five, deuce. So I flop trip nines on top and I've got a draw to the low on bottom with deuce, three, five, six. I'm first to act, so I check to see what develops and action checks around. The turn comes a 6 on top and a 4 on bottom. I make a 56 low, which is the second nuts. I only lose to ace deuce. I throw out a bet of 25 and the big blind is the only player to make the call. Heads up to the river, which comes a deuce on top and a 9 on bottom. I make a full house on top, 9's over deuces, and I still have the 56 low on bottom. I bet 75 bucks and the big blind calls with ace deuce for the nut low. My boat is good for the high hand, so we're going to chop this one. Here I pick up pocket jacks in the small blind and the button straddle is on. I raise to 15. I get calls from the cutoff and the button. We go three ways to a safe looking flop of 385 rainbow. Action checks to me. I see bet for 40, which is a little big. I think 25 or 30 would have worked better. In any case, it doesn't really matter as the cutoff wants to play for all of it. They go all in for 259 bucks. The button folds and I'm a little bit stunned here, did not see that coming. The annoying thing is that I know this player is capable of making some pretty weird plays from stone cold bluffs to overplays, but I literally just saw them do the same thing on the board that was all clubs and they had the nut flush. I go way into the tank and I go back and forth between calling and folding. I have a feeling they either have a set or a hand like pocket nines or tens. I think they're capable of doing this with an eight too. In the end, it's super close. Sometimes I'm going to call and sometimes I'm going to fold. Since I just saw them pull a similar move with the nuts, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's still early in the session. No need to dig myself into a hole. I can find better spots to get it in. I ultimately make a very reluctant fold and a cutoff shows a nine. The way they flipped it without looking at their cards first makes me think they have pocket nines, in which case, as I suspected, they were overplaying their hand. It's never a good feeling folding the best hand, but in the end, I'm okay with it here. In this one, the $5 button straddle is on. Under the gun and low jack make the call before I look down at king queen offsuit in the cutoff and I make it 20 bucks. Under the gun is the only player to make the call, so we go heads up to a flop of king 5 6 rainbow. Under the gun checks to me, I'm going to fire out a small c bet of 15 and a snap fold. I pick up pocket 7s in middle position and open the action to 15. Action folds around to the small blind who 3 bets to 45. Taking a look at their stack, it looks like they have just over 100 bucks behind. So depending which way you look at it, I could either 4 bet and run it for 150 or I could fold because it's not really worth trying to set mine here. Ultimately, I'm going to show the 3 bet some respect and fold. The small blind, who is a friend of the channel, makes their way to my seat to let me know that they owned my soul as they 4-bet me with King-6 offsuit. Nice hand to them, I look forward to getting my revenge soon. In this one, we're playing a double board, 4-card PLO bomb pot. Six of us see a flop of 6-10-deuce, two spades on top, queen 5 10, rainbow on bottom. And I look down at ace-king, jack-7, all spades. I flop the nut flush draw on top and an open-ended straight draw on bottom. Could go either way between building up a pot and checking. This time I decide to check and so does the rest of the table. The turn comes a king on top and bottom. I had a straight draw to my flush draw on top and I turned the nut straight on bottom. Action checks to me and I fire out a bet of 30 butts. Looks like nobody's got much though as everybody folds. Here there's a limp and a raise to six bucks in front of me before I look down at ace jack offsuit from the hijack. I three bet to 25, the button cold calls and the other players fold so we go heads up to a flop of deuce seven king two spades. I'm going to proceed with caution against this opponent who I perceive as playing pretty tight. I check and they check back. Turn comes a four and it goes check check again. Rivers the five of spades and we once again check. 
They show Ace-8 off suit and I'm going to take it down with my better Ace-high. I guess they're not playing as tight as I thought after all. Back to some double barrel, 7 of us see a flop of 9 queen 6, 2 clubs on top and 9 6 7, 2 diamonds on bottom. I look down at ace ace, jack 10 4 with 2 clubs, so I flop the nut flush draw and a straight draw on top. I've got a straight draw on bottom and there's no low possible right now as there needs to be 3 cards under an 8 on either board. Quick note, if there are no lows possible by the river, then the highest hand scoops the whole pot. Undergun leads for 25, I have a pretty easy call with my draws, I also have two aces, making it less likely that someone is drawing to the nut low with ace deuce. The button now raises to 100. Undergun folds and action is back on me. This raise is coming from an action player. Even if they're sitting here with top set, I have plenty of outs to make a better hand, so I decide to make the call. Heads up to the turn which comes a jack on top and a 3 on bottom, no real help on top, I do turn a 67 low on bottom with ace 3, 4, 6, 7. I check to the button who does not slow down, they fire out for 180. I have about 300 behind and they cover me. Uh, I don't know what to do. Neither board is paired. If they stay that way on the river and I hit my straight or flush, I'm almost guaranteed one half of the pot. For the low hand, I only lose to ace deuce and I'm holding two aces, so it makes it really hard for my opponent to have the nut low here. Taking all this into account, I decide to go with it and go all in for around 300 bucks and the button snippity snaps. Can I hit my straight or flush? Nope. Both rivers come bricks. My opponent announces ace deuce for the nut low, so they're going to take down half the pot. And now I'm freaking out that I might get scooped if they're holding some kind of weird two pair. But no, my pair of aces is best. Phew, I dodged a bullet there. We're going to end up chopping. Interesting to see that the button raised the flop with only a nut low draw. It was a dicey spot for sure, but ultimately I think I had to gamble it up against this player. In this next one, there's a button straddle to 5 and the small blind is going to raise it up to 15. I'm in the big blind with King Jack suited. I'm going to 3 bet to 45. Action falls back around to the small blind who makes the call. Heads up to the flop which comes 5, 8, 5, 2 hearts and the small blind checks to me. I'm going to take a stab at it, I can get the small blind to fold a lot of their ace highs with no hearts. I'm going to c bet for 30, I could have gone a bit bigger, but it doesn't matter as it gets the job done. Small blind says they folded ace queen so very nice to get a better hand to fold, I take down the pot. In this hand two players limp before the hijack raises to 10, I look down at ace king offsuit in the cutoff. I'm going to bump up the action to 30, the action is on the small blind but for some reason action folds out of turn back to the hijack. Not sure if this influences the small blind decision, but they end up cold calling my 3 bet, and the hijack is going to make the call as well. We go 3 ways to a flop of jack 3, queen, 2 hearts. Action checks to me, and this is not really the type of board on which I want to c bet as a bluff against 2 other players in a 3 bet pot, so I check back. Turn is pretty interesting, it's the king of hearts putting a flush and straight on the board. The small blind decides to lead for 17 bucks into a pot of 96. It's enough to make the hijack fold but I'm not going anywhere just yet with top air top kicker. Heads up to the river which comes another king, I end up making trips which still lose to a straight or a flush. The small blind bets super small once again 20 bucks and this is where I make a really bad play. I decide to raise to 60 which doesn't make much sense. It's not for value because I'm not squeezing 40 bucks out of the worst hand on this board, so I suppose this is me turning trips into a bluff after those two really small bets from my opponent. And I guess I somehow pulled it off as the small blind mucks their cards, claiming to fold a straight. Bad play, good result, let's move on. Things get pretty spicy in this one. We're playing a 5 card PLO bomb pot and 6 of us see a flop of 959 rainbow. Action checks to me and I look down at king queen 554, I flop a boat 5s over 9s. Flopping a full house is awesome, but the pessimistic side of me is looking at those two nines on the board, thinking one or two of my opponents is holding a nine, and if they pair any of their other cards on the turn or river, I'm going to lose a bunch of money. I start things off by betting 20 bucks, under the gun snap shoves for 47 bucks, hijack makes the call, and action folds back to me. Well, if somebody's got quads, so be it, but I'm not going to flat call with a boat here and let my opponent draw to a better full house for free. I 3 bet to 175 and the hijack goes all in and they cover me. Some players will only put me all in with quads here, but this particular player is definitely capable of making this move with just a 9. Oh, 
This is probably the only time in poker where you call all in with a full house and hate it. I know I'm getting free rolled, but I can't find the fold. I announce call and show my cards. There's almost a thousand bucks in the middle. I know I have to dodge a bunch of cards, I just don't know which ones. I'm having an almost out of body experience as the turn comes at 6. Short stack under the gun player shows 9-5 for a worse full house. I can't see what the hijack has, I'm not even looking honestly, but this is kind of like when you're watching a horror movie and you can't look at the screen. The river is an ace and the hijack seems unhappy about the run out. Under the gun is loving it as they had an ace, so they do hit a higher full house. They're going to win the main pot. Looks like the hijack also had a 9 as expected and thankfully I dodge all the cards that would have given them a higher full house, so I win almost 800 bucks. Let's go! In this one we're playing drama. Six of us see a flop of 4 queen 5 rainbow and I've got ace 9 9 8 4 with 4 diamonds in my hand. I've got a pair of 4s on the board and a pair of 9s in my hand so not much. That doesn't stop me from betting 25 bucks. That's bad play number 1 in this hand. The low jack, cut off, and button make the call, so we go 4 ways into draw time. I'm going to draw 1 and try to make a flip. Wait, I draw 2? What? I guess that's bat play number 2? The turn comes a jack of diamonds and I draw a 9 and a 7, so I now have trip 9s in my hand, pretty lucky considering the bat play, and I now have the nut flush draw on board. Trips down, nut flush draw, I'm going to fire for 100 bucks and everybody folds. In this one there's a straddle to 5 from under the gun, middle position re-straddles to 10, action folds to me and I look down at ace deuce suited in the big blind. I'm going to raise to 35 because that's what the pros do, under the gun folds but the middle position re-straddler makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of queen 6-7. A pretty dry board which is very likely to have missed my opponent. I reach for chips to see bet and middle position snap folds. I take this one down. We're playing a double barrel bomb pot in this one. Six of us see a flop of 1099 rainbow on top, 36 ace, two clubs on bottom. Checks to me in middle position and I look down at king 9975. I flop quads on top, yes! And I flop a 6 7 low on bottom with ace 3567. I'm going to start building up a pot here, I bet 20, and I get calls from the cutoff, small blind, and under the gun. The dream to get called in 3 spots here, we go 4 ways to the turn which comes a 5 on top and a 4 on bottom, I improve to a 57 low which is good but not great. Small blind announces pot and since they're a pretty tight player and I've got the high hand pretty much on lock, I'm going to assume they have the low hand. If I raise, I'm most likely going to get the cutoff to fold, at which point I'll be chopping whatever goes into the pot with the small blind, so I won't win any more money. For that reason, I try to keep the cutoff in the pot by just calling, and unfortunately they fold. Heads up to the river, which comes an ace on top and an 8 on bottom. Small blind goes all in for their remaining 150, I snap call. They show 2-5 for the nut low on bottom, and I of course win the high hand with quads. We chop. In this one there's an open to 5 from under the gun, I look down at pocket 9's in middle position and bump it up to 20. Folds around to the small blind who calls, original razor makes the call as well. 3 ways to a flop of king 7 5 rainbow. Action checks to me and I'm going to continue with the blind aggression and hold him, I see bet for 40 and both players fold. We're playing a Dramaha 49 bomb pot in this one. If you're not familiar with this game, players try to get the highest count possible in their hand and it's called 49 because that's the nut count with 4 10s and 1 9. Face cards are worth 0, aces are worth 1. As the cards are being dealt to me, I accidentally flip a card over, it's the 8 of clubs. The ruling is that because I handled the card and then it was flipped, it stays in play face up. The flop comes king ace king rainbow which is a horrible flop for this game and looking at my other cards I start with 10 10 5 3 I start with a count of 36 which is pretty damn good. Action checks to me and I bet 20. The big blind is the only player to make the call. I'm going to draw the 3 obviously. The 5 is kind of weird because it's right there in the middle it's pretty much a 50 50 chance I'll get a higher card. I go for the aggressive play and I decide to draw the 5 as well. The small blind draws 3 so their 49 hand must be pretty weak. The turn comes the 5 of spades and I draw another 10 and a 7. Are you kidding me? I've got a count of 45. That's the highest count I've ever had in 2 years of playing this game. 
The big blind checks to me, and I think because the flop doesn't contain any middling cards, we're probably both playing our 49 hand, so there's a good chance the hand is going to be over. I bet 40 bucks, and they snap full. Still, very cool hand. Last hand of the vlog, hand number 17. This is a lot more hands than I usually include in my videos, so if you're still here, thank you so much for sticking around, I appreciate that. In this one, we're playing Hold'em, so there's a $5 straddle on the button, and middle position opens to 15. I'm in the cutoff, and I look down at a couple of jacks. A 3-bet to 50, and the middle position player is the only one to make the call. Heads up to a flop of Jack, King, 5, Rainbow, I flop middle set. Middle position checks in flow, and in a heads up situation, I'm happy to check this back. The turn comes another 5, improving me to a boat. It's not making it easier for me to get value though. I'm praying to the poker gods that my opponent somehow has ace-king, king-queen, or queens, tens, and they were just checking in flow on the flop. Doesn't look that way as they check again. I have to try and extract some value from my hand. I throw out a delayed c-bet of 75 bucks, and unfortunately, they fold. That's it for this one. I gotta say, reviewing and editing some of these hands really made me question some of my plays. But I like that. I think no matter where you're at with your poker game, you can always learn, you can always improve. Thanks to you guys who give me feedback in the comments. I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Good luck at the tables, and I'll catch you in the next one.